Oh, actually, I know why I needed that, that 4 by 4 4 by 4 Yep, perfect, thank you. I remember why I had that out now. Thank you. Okay. So the first thing I do is I'm going to measure my wound. There are a bunch of different measurements of my wound that I need to do. I need to do width, length, depth. This wound has tunnel and undermining. So I have five different measurements I need. And then I either need to have someone in the room with me to write them down, okay, or I need to be taking my gloves on and off, writing them down as I go, okay, because I'm not going to remember five different measurements, okay. So we'll do the, the, the width is always side to side on the body. It's always lateral. So your width could be bigger than your length. Does that make sense? So if you had a long wound this way, it might be wider than it is with the length. The width is always head to toe, okay? So length is head to toe. The length of this is 10 centimeters. The width of this is eight centimeters. So right now I'm eight by 10. Next I need to do the depth, okay? Guys, is that sterile, what I did? This is not sterile. Did I touch the wound? Did not touch the wound, the wound needs to be sterile. I'm okay, so what I did is still maintain a sterile technique. I already checked all my expiration dates, colors, and integrity, so I'm gonna pull this out. You agree that the top is not sterile, because my gloves are not yeah. sterile, but the rest of this is sterile, yes? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go down to the deepest part of the wound. It is three and a half centimeters deep. Is okay with that? These two are no longer good to be used. I like to clean up as I go. I don't ever put my hands below my hips because when you have sterile gloves on, which I don't currently have on, I can't go below my hips, so I just practice never doing it. And then I clean up when I'm done. Next, you notice that on this patient at, man, he's so easy to turn around. <laughs> Six, at seven o'clock, he has a tunnel. For those of you with the camera, that's the tunnel. Okay, so I have to measure the depth of the tunnel. And then from, yeah, it's my clock up there, from, I don't know, 10 till 2, let's say 10 to 2, right? Because the head's always 12, the butt's always 6, or the feet are always 6. So from 10 to 2, I have undermining. This is undermining. It's like a cave where miners go. That's a tunnel. This is undermining. You guys see the difference? Mm -hmm. i got to measure both of those. So I'm going to grab it. Because I always peel back and I hold it and peel back. What's the problem? Let's say you, because you all nurses that do this, they open it up, they come in here, they do this and they're sliding this out. That could touch what my fingers just touched. If I want to maintain the sterility, I got to peel it back and hold it back, so because I didn't touch right there. And as I slide that out, it's protected. Does that make sense to you guys? So I'm gonna go into the tunnel. Guys, I've lost a whole entire <coughs> cotton tip out there. Like I didn't lose it, I held onto it, but like the whole thing went into a tunnel before. So don't be surprised when that happens. You've got to act normal. If you go, the patient's like, what's wrong? <laughs> nothing, 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 nothing at all. And just like, oh, okay, cool. So the tunnel at that, at seven o'clock is five centimeters. The undermining. Why am I doing this? I'm trying to find the deepest spot. Two centimeters. You guys good with that? Okay. Do you measure every centimeter? Great question. We don't usually anymore. We used to, and we realized we're not really seeing any progress except for once a week. So we usually measure once a week. At my hospital, it's on Mondays. Good question. In my, uh, I need another set of kind tip applicators. So inside of the Ziploc bag there, you'll see more. The Ziploc bag. Yeah, thanks. Okay, gloves come off. My gloves come off. What's the next thing I do? Hand hygiene of some sort. Okay, from there, I'm gonna set up my sterile field. My last one? I need. No, that's all I need. Okay, thanks. Are we already checked everything? I said, which way do you open stuff? <laughs> Two pairs of sterile gloves. I'm going to remove the sterile gloves. Okay. Then I'm going to put the sterile gloves on. I'm going to set up my sterile field. I'm going to remove one pair of sterile gloves and then use a second pair. I can do this entire thing with one pair of sterile gloves, but I'm not going to show it to you that way. But it is possible. So when I do that, students always get confused. So grab it like that. The outside of this package does not need to stay sterile. Do you agree it's not sterile? Yeah. Those are still sterile. And I was able to grab them without touching anything else that's there. Mm -hmm. Is it okay with that? And then anything else that I might need to be using during my procedure needs to get opened up now before I put my sterile gloves on because the outside of this is not sterile, so I can't touch it with my sterile gloves. And I'm about to put sterile gloves on, right? So anything that I want to be added to my kit 
prior that I have to add to the kit. You guys see that? So I added that, and then I want to go ahead and add my... Oh. <laughs> you guys are on me, I love it. That's good. Guys, there's going to be tons of nurses that open the other way, and they're not wrong. They're not. It is 100% within the right of practice to open that way. But just think about it logically. Which way it seems safer? Because a lot of times in the hospital I miss, so I need like two kits of everything. <laughs> I just miss. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and open this up even though I'm not going to be... I don't need to use it because there's gauze in there, but I want to show you what you do if you're at a hospital where you don't have this kit. Ready to check the color expiration integrity? Too far. <laughs> Again, I don't need to do that, but I'm going to show you guys how to do that if you don't have the stuff that I have inside my kit. Circles always have to be above my hip, my waist. My hands go down here, and I'm looking at Billy. I can't see my hands. I can see my hands. Above my waist. As I open up my sterile gloves, you guys notice that I'm being very handy with them, am I not? Please be handy with your sterile gloves. You gotta break all the seams. If they start to fold back on themselves, you've broken sterile technique. With sterile fields, we say you can never grab the one inch border. This is the exception to the rule. You never get to grab the one inch border except for gloves that you're putting on because they come with a flap like this. After that, the one-inch border does not get touched by sterile gloves. It does not get touched by non-sterile gloves. The one-inch border does not get touched. It's a no-fly zone. Nothing can touch the one-inch border of any sterile field, except for putting on gloves the first time. I pull really hard to make sure that they don't flip back on themselves. You'll see all the time, these will flip out, the nurses will do this, and then they'll flip out, and they'll put the gloves, and they'll put back, and they'll put the gloves You broke the sterile technique. They cannot flip back up. Okay? Break the seams. Take your time. I'm does it look like I'm in a hurry? Okay. With my non-dominant hand, I am right-handed. My right hand's gonna go behind my back. I don't need it currently. I'm going to grab the cuff. Okay, now I'm up off the sterile field. That cuff is ruled for a reason. This is called donning sterile gloves. These gloves are too small for me. You guys see what I'm doing with my other hand? Because I don't want to accidentally contaminate. Okay? Mm -hmm. Sterile is sterile. So 100% okay? Put all four fingers underneath there. Get this thumb away. You don't need this thumb. This thumb is useless. Don't do this. Too many of you guys do this, and when you go to put it on, you accidentally touch your skin. You don't need the thumb to put it on. Fonzie thumbs. Hey! <laughs> yeah, Fonzie thumbs. Kyrie left off the way you were shooting at them in the game. <laughs> so now I can grab stuff inside of here, right? I can't touch that one inch border, can I? Mm -hmm. If I want to move this, how do I move it? I don't get to touch the outside border. I can't touch the outside. Is okay with that? Mm -hmm. I'm going to add an impasse here. The patient's not actually on the bed, so there's not enough room. Can you slide him that way? <laughs> just the patient. Yeah, no, just just the patient. Grab the butt. Slide him more. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> Guys, no, look, i got to be careful. I, there's two ways I can do this. If I do it this way, I can take my hand and actually put it down because I'm protecting my gloves. Mm -hmm. Most nurses don't do that. What they do is, and I know I've contaminated my gloves now because I touched the table. Most nurses do this and look where my thumbs are. Mm -hmm. Okay? Does that make sense? You guys see the slight difference, right? What I did the first time is, and I've broken star technique already because I keep on touching the drape. But what I do is I do this so that I can touch the table, so I can spread it out the way I want, right? What a lot of nurses do is they do this. And now they're 
thumbs are at risk for becoming contaminated because A, they can't see their thumbs and they need to be able to see their thumbs, right? And then they could touch without even knowing. Like my glove could be touching the table and I could not feel it because it's the glove, right? So I always like to grab all my stuff. So I do stuff like this. Okay. The drape cannot hang over the edges. Like this is okay, but it can't hang over the edge where I can't see it. I need to be able to see everything that's in my sterile field. And then I'm gonna start adding stuff to my sterile field. Dressing. Might have had it like bundled up on chucks or something. I could throw it all in there. I don't need to do that. I don't need to measure, I already measured. Throw life. life. Four by fours. Guys, it's a sterile package inside of a sterile package. Color, integrity, expiration date. You'll be surprised how many times you find a sterile package inside a sterile package that is expired. Mm -hmm. The first sterile package was not expired, but the second package that was inside the sterile package expired. It's really nice. <laughs> that so. Miss you too, Biggie. You guys think I'm an idiot? I love it. You don't have to pour water like the trash. You gotta clean the lip. Okay, that's right. Gotta clean the lip. Okay. How you get, you pour it on the floor if you want. <laughs> okay, you guys see what I've done here. If my kit comes with Curlex, I've done it inside this kit. Yes? Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, I did it this way. I have the two exact same things here. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm just showing you how to do it both ways. If it comes with it, you can do it that way. If it doesn't, then you know how to do it. Mm -hmm. You get your own saline, you get your own Curlex, and it comes in a package like that. Okay. Um, okay, so now we're ready to pack it. This one's easier, so I'm going to do this one. Because this one is like, I can grab, I can get my hand in here. This is easy. It's easy to ring out. Okay. This one is a little bit more difficult. Kali, can you grab the bottom of that for me? Thanks. Set it down. So now, I'll try my best not to make too much of a mess, but we make messes. And guys, I don't want to do it over top of the sterile drape because if the sterile drape gets white, guess what? No longer sterile. You got to give it a face. That is like after laying in the sun, then laying on my blanket, and then putting it in my car. Nope, there's still one. Okay, got it back. You want to get it really dry? Because it, it's for debridement. Guys, and then trying to, if you can imagine trying to unroll and pack at the same time, really hard. And again, you're not gonna find this in a textbook somewhere, and this is Tim Myers' technique, and there's other ways to do it, I'm sure. Just the way that I've kind of taught myself how to manage the curlex as I'm putting in the wood. So I unwind it all, and then I snake it back and forth. And this is sterile, my gloves are sterile, so I can do this. And now I never, don't no longer have to worry about trying to unroll and pack at the same time. I can <coughs> pack at the same time, it's really hard to do. Because we're going to do this thoroughly. If I touch the skin with this, I've broken sterile technique. I can only touch the wound. If you're doing this as a test out, because it's one of the test outs, you're going to say, I broke sterile technique. I'm going to look at you and like, start over. You're going to tell me tell 12 times you broke sterile technique. I'm going to look, OK, no problem, start over. You cannot fail as long as you tell me what? Because you broke sterile technique. Because in real life, can you break sterile technique? Yes. What do you do? Start over. So you cannot fail the skill as long as you can say to myself, I broke sterile technique. You want to loosely but fully pack the wound. It is a pressure ulcer. If you pack it too tightly, you are creating pressure on new capillaries. So you do not tightly pack the wound. You pack the wound fully to the top edge of the skin, but not beyond that. So loosely pack, but fully pack. Does that make sense? You do not want to be putting extra pressure on new capillaries. I packed the tunnel first, then I did the undermine, and now I'll do the body of the wound. Could you do the undermine before the tunnel? Sure. There's no difference. Could you do the body, then the tunnel, then the undermine? You could if you could figure out how. I don't know how you would do that. You could. Again, the order does not 
necessarily matter. What's that? It's like surgery. It is like surgery. It's like operation again. Yeah. <laughs> don't get don't buzz. point we're doing the wet to dry is to get it on that right mm -hmm. so. all right primary dressing goes against the wound secondary dressing covers up primary dressing curlex is my primary dressing in this case four by fours are my secondary dressing in this place in this case okay don't don't make it excessively thick moisture will create and that can create more of a wound like a diaper, <laughs> Billy was just showing around pictures of his daughter. How old now? 18 months. 18 months, so she's still in diapers. Yes. My son's two and a half, he's still in diapers. So hopefully soon he gets out of them. He's, he's like, he wants to, he goes to the bathroom now when his sister goes. He's like, I go good. potty. I'm like, yeah, and he just sits there. Like, <laughs> 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 uh, she, she's so good. She's like, push, Walter, push. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, he's trying to. So we have the blue line here, right? So like a diaper has a, a thing that changes color when it's wet. Same mm -hmm. idea here on the outside. My gloves are sterile, right? Yep. Everything is sterile, right? Mm -hmm. I'm being sterile. Don't need to be sterile anymore. This tape was not inside my kit. This tape was sitting there by itself. And guys, remember that this is called a bandage. So we had the primary dressing, which was the Curlex. We had the secondary dressing, which was the 4x4. And we have the ABD, which is our bandage. The bandage holds the dressing in place. You could do a derm, like I said before. Right? You could do that. What did I say? 30% on the skin, 70% on the dressing, bandage, 60, 40, okay, 50, 50, yeah. Don't be this nurse. Do not be this nurse. <laughs> I, I follow you and I make fun of you in front of the patient as I'm ripping off butt hair <laughs> because you didn't want to measure the size of the tape before you put it on. You know, we're not willing to do what I'm doing right now. Does it seem like that hard to do what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like, that hurts. I'm like, yeah, you're losing all your butt hair. <laughs> I don't know why the last nurse put it on so thick. And then they let the next nurse know. When you do my dressing change this time, don't put so much tape on. Tim did a nice job. And then I was like, why do all the patients like you? I don't know. Because I use common sense. How do gloves come off? No. 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 Wrap up in a ball. Then underneath. Hand hygiene. What is a pen? What? Pen? Pen? Marker? Pen. I'm going to. Oh, never mind. I got you now. <laughs> <laughs> I had MSN online just for you guys. Do you know what MSN stands for? Mean to student nurses. <laughs> Masters of Science in Nursing. I don't ever put my PhD on stuff at the hospital because my PhD has nothing to do with what I do at the hospital. Okay, we have six bucks. 